Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Kendra's Corner. Today I am going to make some karma. So it's Diwali time. It's a holiday that all our Hindu brothers and sisters celebrate and some of the most favorite snacks around Diwali, even Eid, but mostly Diwali. Um, would be kurma uh, you have different versions of a kurma you will have a gulab jamun which I love that is the most softer version of the kurma it's also very enjoyable and you'll have barafi and so many others so many others but today we are only going to make some kurma so the ingredients that I am going to use are as Follows. We're going to use some flour, we're going to use some ghee, we're going to use some sugar, we're going to use some cumin, we're going to use some ginger, whole, whole pound, um, grated, fresh grated ginger, or you could use the um, the ginger powder but to get that more intense ginger flavor you could use the fresh ginger I am also going to use some bay leaf and um, we have to we will also use some milk and what else did I forget I don't think I forget anything but if I forgot anything I would put them in after all right, so let's get into the kitchen and put this kurma recipe together. Now, this wouldn't be like a normal recipe. So what I'm, I just gonna, don't want to make the uh, video too long. So it will be a real easy, quick recipe. Meaning, so I give this intro telling you all what I'm going to do. So the next clip you're going to see when I get started is all the ingredients already in the bowl then you're going to see me with the dough and probably just one clip of it frying and then the ending just to make it go quick you know so it would be a real easy simple recipe with no long dragon instructions except for this uh intro to the video all right so let's get started Today I want to make two types of kurma. This kurma I am going to just cut them and fry them and use a glaze to put over it and then I'm going to toss it in sugar. This one I'm going to patch it on the tower first, hot plate, whatever you want to call it and then I am going to fry it and toss it in sugar. Now let's get into the first thing we are going to do. I'm using some fresh cumin. You can use the powder, but I'm using the whole cumin. I'm going to pong it. So I find when you do the fresh cumin, you get a more intense flavor. So once that is crushed to my satisfaction, I'm going to add all of the ingredients to the flour and I'm going to bring it to a very flaky consistency. The consistency that you would get when you're making like a paste, you do that, that kind of consistency you want before you add your cold water right this that is the kind of consistency you would want then I am going to bring everything together with a little bit of milk you can use whatever milk you wish to use or you could just use water I am going to add some vanilla extract that's optional you don't need to you could just make it plain because it already has so much of flavoring in there but it also adds some extra flavoring so i add the extract to the milk all of the ingredients would be in the description and i'm going to bring it to a bowl and i'm going to let that in the leave that in the fridge for 10 minutes while i hot up my oil i'm going to show you now how i'm going to roll this out and also the person that i am I got this recipe from is Taste of Trini. 
so you can check out her YouTube channel. I will leave a link in the end screen and in the description. So once it is rested for the 10 minutes in the refrigerator, I'm going to roll it out as thin as you want or as thick as you want. I wanted these a little more thick and slightly thinner than you would normally use. I use a little bit of ghee, not too much, and you can see the little pieces of bay leaf within the dough. That's what I like. I really like to taste the bay leaf. So now I'm going to use that cutter there to strip it into the thickness that I want. So I'm not going to make bite-sized pieces with this or the customary size of kruma with this, but I'm going to make them long. And I roll out the dough really thin and I did not cut them in very small pieces. I wanted them a little wide and long. That is not the regular size of a traditional kruma. The other one that you would see would be done that way the traditional way all right so once my oil is hot i am going to add my flour now you want to leave it in the flour she said for at least five minutes and you want a nice golden color as i said the link for her recipe would be in the cards the end screen and the description her name is on, on youtube is taste of trini and you can see how it is swelling up there that's really, really what you want. You don't want the dough not to cook, so you know it is cooking up nicely. So I want a nice golden brown color. I don't want it burnt. And remember, this has a lot of sugar. It has the condensed milk in it. So you, you don't want it to start to burn. So you want to make sure your fire isn't too high. And you want to make sure when you're heating your oil, you don't heat it up quickly, but you let it slowly build up in heat. So you'll have a perfect, perfect, perfect heat temperature for your kuma. So after uh, five to six minutes, I am removing them from the fire and I'm going to start the glaze because remember I said I'm doing a glaze for this and then I'm tossing it in sugar. Now this I am doing here is not how she did it. This is not the traditional way to do the kuma. The other one would be more so how she did or how you're supposed to do the kruma. I just decided to add a glaze to this one and a, um, the sugar coating just to be fancy, you know, and I added some freshly grated ginger to that. So this is the glaze here. In the here I had some um, almond extract, sugar, bay leaf, and a cinnamon stick. How do you know it's ready? She said once the sugar starts to bubble to the top and once you place your hand to the back of the spoon and it's really sticky, you know it's ready. So I'm going to place this glaze over my kruma. I'm just going to mix this around. Now this will not crystallize because I don't want it to crystallize. I'm not going to move it around in the pan. I'm just going to just barely just make sure that everything is coated and I'm going to just leave it at that. Then I am going to start another set of sugar and put some ginger in that and it will have that nice sugary coating on the outside with a lot of ginger because I really like ginger. <laughs> and uh, that is what we're going to do next. So this is what it looks like after I mix it up in the glaze that I just made. And now this is the sugar, the next set of sugar and I did put a great portion of ginger in this and I would coat it and leave it put it in a pan and I will keep stirring 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 it until it del you see that nice white sugary coating starting to appear on the kruma so you know at that point it is good and that's how I got this kruma so you don't have to use ginger some people don't like it with this much ginger, but I really like ginger. So I did this with ginger. Now, with the other recipe, I did not use ginger. I just made a plain kruma. And this recipe, she did not do the patching of the flour on the tawa or hot plate, but she did it in like how I did it in this in this recipe. She also have that recipe with the one that I did on the tower. So you know what? I'm going to link the two videos. So let's get on to the next recipe. Let's get started. So I'm using an, a piece of the dough that was previously fried. And I'm going to just neaten up the edges. 
and I'm going to rule it out to the thickness that I want to work with is all up to you how thick you want it so I'm placing it on my heat, heated hot plate we would say tower or platen in the Caribbean all right and then I'm going to cook it on each side for like two minutes because my tower was really really hot and um, I didn't need to leave it for too long because it just forming a crust on the surface there right she said the purpose of this is so that it really wouldn't change the shape also and I'm going to also once again fry it in ghee and she said to fry it between five minutes so that's exactly what I did and then I'm going to remove it once you have that nice golden color you know it's finished and you're going to remove it from the oil and do the same process like we did earlier on but what I'm not going to do in this process is use a glaze I'm going to do the traditional way and the way she did it in her video all right so let's remove it I'm just showing you how nice and golden they look and removing them and placing them on some napkins to drain out the excess oil and all of the in ingredients would be in her video I'm not going to leave it in my video because I want you to go there and get all the proper instructions I am just doing this video just to show you that I got through I did exactly what she said to do and it was perfect so then once the sugar is ready we're going to put it into a pan with the cooked kurma and we're going to toss it around until you see this sugary crystals forming on the outside that is what you're going to do you're going to keep tossing 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 until you see that forming there and when you know that that crystallization of the sugar is taking place you know you're done and you're going to just leave it to cool off and enjoy your kurma and that is how easily she did it and oh my gosh all those things that i place into this the bay leaf and the um, extract added a real real extra amount of goodness and in the previous video as i said she did not use a glaze but i just tried that you know just wanted to see how it would come out with the glaze and some a lot of ginger and it was amazing so if you are a ginger loving kind of person like myself try that that really come out nicely but this here is her recipe so please go give it a check all the ingredients and the measurements would be in her video thank you all so much for stopping by and watching this quick demo of how i was able to make taste of trini kurma recipe she is also a Trinbegonian and she has a YouTube tra channel she has truly supported me throughout my journey and uh, I just really 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 appreciate her mentoring over the years and her support so if you haven't checked out her channel yet please do so and this recipe wasn't disappointing at all if you're a sweet lover and you want something really easy to put together, ladies and gentlemen, her recipe is idiot proof. That didn't sound too good, but, <laughs> but in other words, it's so easy, it's impossible to get it wrong. So thank you all so much and don't forget to check out all my other recipes. Bye.